G'day, it's Michael Guest here. Well, in this episode of Start Your Own Battle, I'm, I'm on my own actually, so I'm definitely starting my own battle this afternoon. I hope so anyway. This is a great looking spot to spin some tailor off the sand. There's a few rocks here as well. And, and look, I think when you're chasing tailor, the open beach, uh, open sand can be a fantastic place to do it, but they love little washy areas that kick off rocks. So this is just a little quiet beach. There's a big open beach just around the other side. Uh, it's late in the afternoon, the sun's starting to drop and that's the time when the tailor love to get out and about and start feeding. So they mainly chase, I reckon predominantly chase on the beach, bait fish. So what we're going to do is, is cast some, some uh, chrome lures. One of the big things when you're fishing like this is uh, you need to have that, uh, that distance. You need to be able to cast quite a long way, maximise your distance. So that's where the gear plays a big part of it. Um, they will be right at your feet at times, at other times they can be frustrating where you can see them busting up, you'll see seagulls and terns and other seabirds feeding and you're trying to make that cast. So we've got to make sure we get the gear right to, uh, to maximise that distance. That's one of the big things. I've got a range of chrome metal lures there, some I've had for a long time. Um, oh, all sorts of things in here. Some have got trebles on them, but what I have been doing of late is I've been taking the trebles off and just running a couple of these um, owner plugging singles and I put them on the on the split ring there and they sit pretty well like that uh, they're very strong hookup rates really good so i um, been going with those these are a 3.0 on this 65 gram lure I've got lures in here that are anything up to about close to 100 grams um, and generally that profile is about the right size profile for what the tailor are feeding on so you're thinking of of uh, big white bait and, uh, and pilchards and fish like that, small mullet even at times, they'll come in and crush those, uh, especially when they, when, uh, when they get washed out of the creeks and river systems and then hug the beach, those little mullet, they, they're a really big food source for the tailor as well. So that, that sort of size, around that total length of about 100 mil, 120 mil is perfect. Taylor have got razor sharp teeth and sometimes you'll see people using wire traces. Look, I, on metal lures like this, Generally they're chasing them, chasing them, you're cranking it along and they're hitting them at the back. So that's all metal. They're certainly not going to bite through any of that. So I, I think sometimes it can even interrupt the action of the lure a little bit. And, and having a swivel go through and create a bubble trail, other tailor might even bust that off. So I, I generally just like to tie my leader straight to the lure and, uh, and crank it along, change your retrieves up a little bit. You can wind them fast, wind them slow, see what those tailor are looking for. One of the big things on the beach is you're looking for some sort of structure. At the moment out here, I've got a bit of a rocky point um, where the current's hitting it and swirling around. That, that's always a good place for tailor. There's a bit of a drop off, but your gutters, uh, your holes along the beaches that provide really sort of deeper access for them in the middle of the day. They don't like bright light in their eyes so much. Uh, anywhere where there's a bank and a gutter where foam's rolling over, the same sort of places that Mulloway like, tailor will be in those same sort of areas as well. Well, I've got to tell you, look, I was going to go through the gear, but you know what? I can't wait to have a cast. Let's go down the water and we'll have a chat about it there. Let's have a bit of a look at the outfit we're using. So this is a Prevail 2. It's the um, 842M and it's a 6 to 10 kilo rod. Uh, yeah, 8 foot 4 long, so it gives you that really big long cast. And that's what you need. There's, there's nothing more frustrating than walking the sand here and, uh, and going, oh, they're just out a little bit further. So you want to maximise your cast distance. I've got lures in there up to 100 grand. This one's a 65, we've got some 40s. Depending on the size of the bait, you see it get sprayed around. But with a 65 grammer, with 20 pound braid, a bit of 30 pound vanished fluorocarbon leader, and that little spin fisher, I can punch them out around about 80 metres. A matter of having about that sort of 400 mil, 450 mil of drop back, you don't want your knot, your joining knot onto your spool. So there's my 20 pound braid there onto my 30 pound fluorocarbon leader with an FG knot. So when I'm casting that bale up there, I want my finger right there. So I'm not pulling the leader across that braid because that can certainly slow your cast down and there's always a chance you could pull a bit of a loop when you're doing those big mega casts. So I've got my fingers split, split through there. You can hold it however you want to hold it, but always split them through that grip. That's my trigger finger to let go when I do that big cast. And I want to get it as the most amount of leverage out of, out of that eight foot four rod that I can. So I'm holding it down low there loading that rod up with the weight of that lure and then punching out. So it's a matter of punch, keep that rod tip pointed up, 45 degrees, let all that line go, bail arm over. And then as far as the retrieve speed goes, depends on what the fish are doing. Sometimes you've got to jig it a bit and go a little bit slower if they're down deeper and you've got a bit of a, bit of a deeper hole or gutter to fish. Other times when they're really active, it's crank, 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 bang, and you get that bite. And uh, that's the cool part about spinning for Taylor. 
as far as the tides go with Taylor, I, I think any time on the beach where you can get an incoming tide, so you've got that tide pushing in, uh, it just gives the tail some more water to play with as far as the depth goes. So I think that's a really big one. So you will catch them on the low tide in different places and you'll hook them while you're talking like I just did there on the retrieve. But um, yeah, you will get them in um, yeah, on that low tide, but generally in those deeper gutters. But as that tide comes up late in the day like this, they'll come right, right in close as well. And that one was just behind the break. So I cast way over the break but this fish has climbed on it right there. Other bycatch you'll get too, don't forget, Australian salmon. I've jigged uh, flathead up off the beach. It's a matter of washing that fish up with a wave and use that wave to your advantage. Keep going, stop, and there we go. That's how we do it. Look at that. What a great looking fish. Big surf tailor. I reckon there's some bigger ones in that there, so I'll pop those hooks in. You can see those two Plugging single hooks that I've used there have done the job perfectly. I'll just pop that one out. That one's out, that one's just in the corner there. Get that one out, here we go. Look at that, for a beautiful surf tailor. That time of the afternoon, no one around. I've got this to, this little beach all to myself. And of course the big open beaches and those holes and gutters are great places as well. Let this fella go. Here you go, mate. Go on, bud. I reckon this could be the next size up. Went really well, this fish. They fight so hard. Same deal. Oh, yeah, it's a bigger one. It's a bigger one. Yes! Woo! Chase him now. <laughs> that is a solid tailor right there. That's a fat one, that one. Wow. He has been in a good paddock, that bloke. Cool fish. They're a great fish to handle. They, uh, they've got quite soft fins. They've got those super sharp teeth, which you need to be careful of. Uh, we don't need to worry about wire leader or anything here because we've got that metal lure and those, those hooks set to fairway back and be really unlucky to get bitten off. Occasionally, another fish in a school, when those uh, fish school right up, uh, it might have a crack at your lure hanging out of the other fish's mouth. Well, there you go. That's a beautiful big tailor. We've been through the gear. We've spoken about when, where and why. It's time for you to start your own battle. I'm going to take the hooks out of this bloke and watch him swim off. <laughs>